All right, every single one of these are, um, well, they're all graphing. So you just graph the two separate graphs, and it looks like one of these is linear in every case, and one's quadratic, and you see where they cross. So let's try this. Um, this guy right here, if I add y, right, I get 2x equals y plus 3. If I subtract 3, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to get y equals 2x minus 3. Um, I'm going to graph that with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept at negative 3. So here I go, negative 3. I go up 2 over 1. I go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And so on. Until I get something that looks... I'm going to do my best to eye this in. I'm sitting here without a ruler. But that's pretty close. This guy right here, if I subtract 6, right, I've got y equals 2x plus 1 squared minus 6. So what happens is I have a slope of uh, a value of 2, an h of negative 1, a k of negative 6. So let's go negative 1 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. Since my stretch is 2, I go over 1 and up 2 this way, and then I go over 1 and up 2 this way. You know what? I have no idea where that's going to go, so I'm going to plug in 1. So I'm going to say, hey, if x equals 1, we got y equals 2 times 1 plus 1 squared minus 6. What's 2 times 4? 4 minus 6, which is 2. Um, so I've got... Oh, I didn't go over. Yeah, I did. So I plugged in 1, and out popped 2. All right, so 1. There's my center. Right there. Move over 1, 2 more. There's a 2 there as well. So i got a graph that looks here. And, um, you know, this isn't the best way to, because we see there's two solutions. There's one here and one about here. And in this situation, I would probably use a graphing calculator. Use calculator. Because there's going to be fractional answers, and this isn't the best way to solve for fractional answers. So I'd use a calculator, and we can do some of that in class. Um, just the second uh, intercept function. Let's do another one right here. All right. So if I subtract 3x from this guy, I get y equals negative 3x plus 4.5. And this one is already solved for us. Well, let's see what we get without a calculator in this case. Um, so I'm going to go up. My slope is about negative 3. My y-intercept is 4.5. So let's do that. We'll go up to 4.5, which is right here. Then I go down 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And I'm going to do my best to connect those. Let's go up. 1, 2, 3. I'm halfway. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And if I connect these, I get a line that looks a little bit, a little bit like this. And if I graph this other one, right, this other one has an a value of 1 half. So we got a vertical compression and an h value of 3. We move right 3. So I start here. And the first time I go up 1 half, I go over 1. So I'm going to go right there and there. You know, I could probably plug in 0 really easy. We'll see where 0 is. Let's, let's plug in 1 first. So if I say, hey, x equals 1, I've got y equals 1 half. 1 minus 3 squared. Well, 1 minus 3 squared is negative 2 squared, which is 4 times 1 half. I get 2. So when I do 1 right here, I get 1, 2 up there. So I'm getting a situation where I am probably never, ever going to cross. Uh, but again, on a graph, there might be one in here. I just don't think there is, right? So I'm going to say no solutions. Again, 
we're kind of showing the weakness of this method. The weakness of this method is you really need a graphing calculator. So you just graph and we get an idea where the solutions are, but like I, I, I see where about where they are, but without a graphing calculator, there is um, really a hard time telling exactly where. If I take this one right here, I'm gonna subtract three x, y equals negative three x. Well, that's easy. My slope is negative three and my y-intercept is zero. So we're gonna go slope, negative three is to one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one. I can go up two, three, one, and I'm gonna do my best two, three, one to connect those dots with a pretty straight line. All right, something like, something like that. Let's check this guy out right here. We add six, right? Plus six, and I get y equals negative three times x squared plus six. In this case, my a value is a negative three. My k value is plus six. Let's do it. This just means go up six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is the first time I'm actually gonna get a solution that I can see. I go over one and down one, two, three. It definitely touches there, All right? And the other side, let's try it. If I go over one, I go down one, two, three. So I know I'm there, and let's see if two gives me something. So I'm gonna say x equals two. So y equals negative three times two squared plus six. Y equals, well that's negative 12 plus six, which is y equals negative six. So when I plug in two, I get negative six, and sure enough, that works. So hey, it worked out for this. I got whole number solutions, right? I'm gonna circle them on here. I've got, so my solutions are two negative six is one solution, and my solution over here is, looks to be one three, and I have one three. So it worked out for that one. Wish that I got that one first, and that's gonna be page two.